Hey, what is going on guys? Welcome back to another PS4 jailbreak tutorial. So in this one, we're going to be covering once again how to set up the Luxfox Pico to jailbreak your PS4. The Luxfox Pico is essentially like a Raspberry Pi, but a cheaper version that you can use to automate the jailbreak for your PS4. You just have it plugged into your PS4, then whenever you turn on the console, it will run the jailbreak and keep trying to exploit the console until it succeeds. So I did cover this in a previous video, but the method has changed quite a bit since that original video. So it's quite a bit different now, and there have been several improvements. And one of the big changes is that we no longer require an SD card for the exploit. So we can actually load the exploit onto the internal flash memory of the chip instead, which eliminates the need for the SD card, making this whole setup even cheaper, because all you really need is the Luxfox device itself as well as a spare ethernet cable to connect to the PS4, and of course a USB-C to USB type A cable to power it. That is all that's required now. So there's lots of different Luxfox Pico types. So we've got the Luxfox Pico Max, the Pico Pro, and the Pico Plus. Any one of those will be fine. So just make sure it's either a Max, a Pro, or a Plus, because those have the ethernet port that's required, as well as the internal flash memory chip as well that's needed so that you don't have to use an SD card. So once you have one of those Luxfox devices, we can head over to the project here. All the download links will be linked, of course, in the video description. So if we scroll down to the instructions here on the GitHub page, you can see that it says if you have a brand new Luxfox, you can skip the step four. And that's because you already have the firmware set up on the chip. If it's brand new, if you've just bought it, then you'll already have the firmware set up. So you can kind of skip the reset of the firmware. But if you've been using the Luxfox for any other projects beforehand, or you've been you know, using the SD card method and booting the exploit from the SD card, then you'll need to reflash the firmware on the Luxfox device back to the stock firmware. So I'll show you guys how to do that first. But obviously, if you've just bought a brand new Luxfox device, it will already have the stock firmware on there. And you can just skip to the timestamp that I'll put up on screen right here. Okay, so to reset the firmware, first of all, what we're going to do is we're going to head on over here to this link, which I'll leave down in the description. We want to download the driver assistant, so we'll download that. And we also want to download the SOC toolkit, which you can download from right here. So once you have those two things downloaded, if we copy them over here, we're going to run the driver assistant first of all. So run the install.exe. You might need to right click and run it as administrator and then install the driver first of all and let it say that install driver OK. Once that's done, we can then run the SOC toolkit itself. So we'll run this. Then it will ask you for the chip type. So if we go back to the GitHub and we scroll down, we'll see that it does show the different chip types here. So if you have a Pro or a Max, it will be an RV1106 chip type. And if you have a Pico Plus or Mini, it will be an RV1103. So I have the Plus, so it's gonna be RV1103. If you have the Pro or the Max, it will be RV1106. So I'm a 1103, so I'll select that and click OK. So from here, we want to get it to detect our Luxfox Pico. So now we need to actually plug in our Luxfox Pico to the computer. So plug in a charge cable to the computer and the other end into your Luxfox Pico. Now, when you do this, you want to hold down the boot button as you're plugging in the USB-C cable to the Luxfox device. So as you plug it in, make sure you're holding down that boot button and then you should see this mask ROM 19, or it might not be 19, it might be 20, 22, something like that. But you should see this show up here in your SOC toolkit. If you don't see this, then it's obviously not done correctly. So unplug it and do the same thing again. Hold down the boot button as you're actually plugging in that USB-C cable to power it, because it will only show up when you hold down the boot button as you're plugging it in. So with that now selected, we then need to download the appropriate flash files. So if we head back to the GitHub page, the firmware can be found with this link here. If you right click and open this in a new tab, it'll open up the firmware on Google Drive. We want to go into the build root folder. And in here, we've got the flash files for all of the different Luxfox devices, as well as the SD card images if you're installing to an SD card. But of course, we're installing to the internal flash. So what we want to do is select your Luxfox version. So mine is a Luxfox Pico Plus and we want to select the flash version. So select the flash version for your Luxfox Pico device, and then just click the download button here to download it onto your computer. And that will of course download it as a zip file and you'll need to extract that zip onto your computer. As you can see, we've got it right here. 
Okay, so what we want to do is then open up that folder. So we're going to select the path here. So search path. We're going to select that option. And we're going to select our Luxbox Pico Flash folder that we just extracted. Select that folder. We'll click yes. And it will add all of the files in here. We then want to click this button here to select all of the files so that everything is highlighted. And then we're just going to click the download button, which is going to flash the required files. So there we go. Once it says download done, that means we are all good. So it should now be reset so we can close out of this. Then we're going to go into our search bar here and we're going to search for ncpa.cpl. So ncpa.cpl control panel item. We're going to select that option. That's going to take us over to our network connections for on our control panel. And what you should see here is we're looking for an ethernet device to show up that shows as remote NDIS or NDIS. You're looking for an ethernet device that is NDIS. You might have a few different ethernet devices like I do. So just look for the one that says NDIS. That is the one for the actual Luxbox uh, Pico device itself. If this does not show up, then try unplugging the Luxbox Pico and plugging it back in again to the computer and it should show up. So from here, we're going to right click on this network adapter and go down to properties. Then we're going to scroll down to Internet Protocol version 4 and double click on this. And then we want to switch it from obtain IP address automatically to use the following IP address. And the IP address is going to be 172.32.0.100. And then the subnet mask, if you just click in the subnet mask, it should auto fill it for you. And then you're just going to then we're just going to click OK and OK again. And it should now be enabled. And that should be good. So we should now be able to connect to our Luxfox device. So to do this, we're then going to use something called MOBA X term, which can be downloaded here. I'll leave a download link to it in the description. I downloaded the mobile version, the portable version. So go ahead and download this application. If we open this up and we'll just extract it to a folder called MOBA X term. And we're just going to extract our zip file inside. And then from here, if we open this up, run the program, we should be able to get it connected up to our Luxbox Pico. So to do this, we're going to go to our session. We're going to go to SSH. Our remote host is going to be 172.32.0.93. And then for the username, we'll specify username and we'll put root as our username. And then we will make sure that the port number is set to 22 and then click OK. And then we will accept the certificate and it will ask for the password. The password is luckfox, one word, all lowercase, no spaces. OK, so now that we're logged in, all we need to do now is get the files for the exploit onto the luckfox device. Now we can do this by heading back to the GitHub project again and going to the code and downloading it as a zip file. Or you can scroll down to step eight and just click the link here to download it. So once you've got that downloaded, and I do have it already downloaded here, so luckfox pppone luckfox main, you want to rename it and get rid of the dash main at the end of the folder name. So get rid of that. So it's just pppwn luckfox. So from here, we can just drag this folder onto this box on the left here and let go. And that should transfer, as you can see there, transfers the folder and all of the files inside. It will transfer that over to the Luxbox device. And then the final step is to actually enable it here and run the install script. So step nine here, we've got the install script. We're just going to copy that, copy that code, and then right click to paste it in here into the terminal. We'll click OK and paste it. And then we get our command here. We'll click OK. And that will run all of the commands apart from the last one, which is the install script. And we'll press enter to run that. And now we'll have to go through this basic questionnaire here. So please select your PS4 firmware version. So I'm on 11.0. So choose between A, B, C, D, or E. So I'm going to select option E for 11.0 and press enter. And now it says, are you sure that is correct? So we'll do Y for yes and press enter. Do you want your luck box to shut down after successfully jailbreaking? So I will say yes to this. So generally the idea is that you're going to be powering the Luxfox device from a USB port on the PS4 itself. That way, once you successfully jailbreak, you can just shut down the Luxfox because the next time you want to run the jailbreak will be the next time that you restart the console. And every time you start the console, it will start up the Luxfox device. 
So in that case, it makes sense to have it shut down after it's successfully jailbroken. However, if you're powering, of course, the Luxvox device from a separate power supply rather than the PS4, then you might not want to shut down the Luxvox device after successfully jailbreaking. So in this case, I am going to be powering it from the PS4. So we'll say yes to shut down uh, once it has successfully jailbroken. So next, that asks you what executable you want to use. Kind of strange this because generally I would think the IPv6 update is what everybody should use because it supports all PS4 models. It's possible that the regular PPPone version option A uh, might actually be faster or work better on other PS4 models. So it really depends. Generally, I would go option B for best compatibility though across all PS4 models. So that's the option I'll select here. So we'll press enter there. So are these settings correct? We'll just do Y for yes and press enter. And there we go, installing to the NAND and it is now rebooting. So there we go. So it's now trying to run the exploit uh, whenever it reboots. So we can now exit out of this. So now we just want to plug in the Luxfox Pico to the PS4. So plug in an ethernet cable, one end into the Luxfox Pico, the other end into the ethernet port on the PS4. And of course, plug in the USB-C charge cable uh, to the Luxfox Pico and plug the other end into a USB port on the PS4 as well, so that you're powering the Luxfox device directly from the PS4. Okay, now finally, if you have not set up the jailbreak before, you will need to load the Gold Hen payload from a USB drive when it's the first time trying to load the jailbreak. So grab yourself a USB drive that is formatted in XFAT or FAT32 format. And then from there, we're going to go into that USB drive, go into our pppone luxfox folder. And in here, we have the USB drive folder and you'll find the Gold Hen payload in there. You just want to copy that out to the root of your USB drive and plug that USB drive into one of the spare USB ports on the PS4. You'll only need to do this once to run the jailbreak once. Once it has successfully loaded the jailbreak, you'll then be able to load it from the internal hard drive instead, and you will no longer require that USB drive. It's only when you load it for the first time that you need to load it from a USB. Okay, so to set things up on the PS4, we're going to head into our settings, go down to our network settings, set up an internet connection using a LAN cable. We're going to select a custom setup and we're going to do PPPoE and enter a random user ID and password and click next and then do automatic, automatic and do not use proxy server. And then that's it. We can test our internet connection and we should be able to obtain an IP address. As you can see there, obtain IP address successful. When you see that message, that means that things are indeed working. The Luxfox Pico is trying to exploit your PS4. So you're just going to wait for this to succeed. Now, you will not need to test internet connection every single time now, as long as you have your network settings set up for PPPoE. As soon as you do that, it will automatically start trying to run the jailbreak. Not only that, oh wow, first try. That was unexpected. Okay, there we go. Gold 10 2.4 B17.3 loaded, coded by Sistro. So we have successfully jailbroken our PS4 on the first try, uh, which does not always happen. It normally takes a few attempts. But as you can see, we got lucky there and got it on the first try. So uh, now that we have successfully jailbroken, you can see there it said LAN cable not connected because we told it to shut down the Luxfox Pico after it has successfully jailbroken uh, the PS4. So now that it has successfully ran, it has now shut down the Luxfox Pico and that's why we got that LAN cable disconnect message. And then to connect to the network in future, you can just uh, set up an internet connection using Wi-Fi, using your, your existing Wi-Fi setup, and that will get you back connected up to the network now that you're jailbroken. So if you're going to remain completely offline, you can remain connected to the Luxfox Pico through LAN cable. That way, every time you turn on your PS4, it will turn on the Luxfox Pico, start trying to jailbreak the PS4 immediately so that by the time you're you know set up onto the home screen and you're logged in it'll have already tried maybe at least once one attempt already and then it will get jailbroken faster if you have it set up like that but obviously if you want to use network features on your PS4 as well then like, like I just did there you can switch to your Wi-Fi setup so you can use network features and then obviously whenever you turn on your PS4 it will not run the jailbreak until you go back into your network settings again and switch it back to use a LAN cable with the same custom settings to then run the jailbreak from the Luxfox device. So, you know, it depends how you want to use it there, but that is one of the options. So anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this updated guide. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe, and I'll hopefully see you guys once again in the next video.